Hey y'all, this is Jason again. This video is going to be about the Lord Jesus Christ and who He is to me and who He is to everybody that comes to abide in Him and uh, who He is in the Bible. I've made several videos on the rapture and the difference between the hell as taught in the churches and Gehenna and the lake of fire as taught in the Bible. Also a video on the resurrections and kind of like the matrix world and some conspiracy stuff and uh, my healing and my testimony and I just want to make a video about Jesus because he's the most important. He is to be the foundation and the centerpiece and the cornerstone of our lives and of our thoughts and of our actions and of everything we do needs to be centralized around him because he says, I am the vine and you are the branches and apart from me you can do nothing. So if we are doing anything apart from Yahushua HaMashiach, then it's done in vain. I mean, it's worthless. There's no fruit coming from it because um, we're just vessels that bear His fruit, as a brother in Christ has told me, which I love. Um, so I hope y'all get something out of this message. don't really know what I'm going to say, but I'm just going to talk about who Jesus is. Jesus is, first of all, the Lord. Jesus is my Master and I strive to be a good servant. And every time I call him Lord, um, it's kind of been a title, you know, as I was being raised up, um, rather than something that meant master, boss, employer, you know, Lord. Like uh, back in the, the medieval times, yes, my Lord. You know, that's what all the slaves would say to their kings. He's also king, and he's king of the kingdom of heaven. And he's soon coming to take dominion as king in the earth. And we will reign with him for 1,000 years. All those who he sees of himself in, which is awesome. Um, he came preaching the kingdom. So he came talking about this kingdom that is to come into earth. And he said, you know, if I was a king of this world, if my uh, kingdom was of this world, my people would fight for me. And that wasn't the case. You know, the disciples and the apostles did not bear arms. However, when the Lord does come to take his kingdom in the earth, which is happening very soon, those dead in Christ, those saints of old who rise up at the, the first resurrection, and those who uh, are martyred in the day of the Lord, the great tribulation, and those who are alive and are raptured, will then return with him on horses, clothed in white, and they will wage war on the world and on the inhabitants and those uh, children of Satan that are still here because that is when the Lord comes to take his kingdom. So he's king. He's seated at the right hand of the Father and he desires to make us uh, kings and priests along with him. That's why he's the king of kings because he wants us to be kings alongside him. In Revelation he says... Uh, and I will give you the right to sit on my throne just as my father has given me the right to sit on his throne. So that's awesome. He's our high priest. He makes intercession before the father. And uh, I just love all the stuff that Hebrews, the book of Hebrews talks about all the high priest and how he can make intercession with us and how he is the, the, the fulfillment of the shadowy high priest of the Old Testament with the blood and all that stuff. Um... He's God. He's Emmanuel. He's God with us. He's the uh, visible image of God that came in the likeness of sinful flesh, that came in a body, that came in the shape, and came as a man. And that is awesome. I love how the Lord Jesus um, says in the book of John many different times, I am, because when God sent Moses, he said, tell them, I am has sent you. So... Yahushua identified himself with the God of the Bible. And that's just kind of a brain teaser, but it's awesome. Um, the Lord is our Passover lamb. Hallelujah, Hushua. In the Old Testament, in the book of, uh, I think it's Exodus when it starts talking about this, yeah. Um, God commands Moses to tell the Hebrews that they need to have blood on each side of their door, blood on the top post. This blood needs to be that of an innocent lamb. And uh, this will be done so that when the angel of death 
comes upon the land of Egypt, he will pass over the houses of the Hebrews, and he will not smite the firstborn. Whereas all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, of the Egyptians, that do not have that blood over their door, they will be killed. Um, and this is a sign, of course. We know that Jesus is the Lamb of God. You know, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, as John the Baptist says. And uh, He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as the sheep before his shears is silent, so was he. Uh, the awesome prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, 600, 700 years before he came in the flesh in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 uh, pictures him as a lamb a sacrificial lamb in the book of Revelation it refers to him as the lamb as well and so uh, he truly came as the lamb so that death might pass over us now Yahushua himself died he got up Apostle Paul died, John died, Peter died, all of them died. There's nobody in the earth that's over 120, 130 years old. So everybody dies in the sense of the first death, the death of the body. But the death that Jesus came as the Passover lamb to keep us from is that of the second death, which he said is to have both body and soul destroyed in Gehenna which is the lake of fire. Um, so this is the death of which there is no resurrection, and he's the Passover lamb whose blood has kept us from that. And it's only our rejection of that gift and our rejection of his spirit that uh, keeps us from coming into that forgiveness. Now if we uh, continue to put him on, on the cross again and again, then we, by our own admission, have uh, made our repentance unrepentance, made our forgiveness unforgiveness by just showing we don't really want that forgiveness because if we did, we would do what he desires of us. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, is what the Lord says. And I haven't really heard it taught much growing up in the churches, the, uh, the conditionals that the Lord Jesus makes throughout the Gospels, primarily in Matthew, Mark, and Luke continually says if if you keep if you obey if 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 and these ifs don't like to be touched on a lot it's like if you confess with your mouth that you believe then you're good to go and you can go live like the heathen live like the world and uh, every time we read scripture as a wise brother in Christ told me you have to take the context of that verse within the chapter the context of that chapter within the book, the context of that book within the testament, the context of that testament within the whole of the Bible. So it needs to be a contextual analysis of it.